normally, if you only pay for half, you only get half. Hello, people of Earth. Well, I was perusing the online classifieds around our area that I sometimes do, looking for telescopes and telescope accessories. I came upon this Explorer Scientific 80 millimeter APO for $500. I thought that's a pretty good deal. They list for 900, so I called them up to see what was up, and it ended up being one of those liquidation places where they buy pallets of stuff, you know, returns and shipments that didn't get delivered and all that stuff. Sometimes broken items, so it's kind of iffy to go to those places, but had my fingers crossed. Called them up, went over there right after work to check it out, and it looks like it was brand new in the box to me. Everything was there, except for, I think they have a soft case of some sort that they came with, this didn't have that. But, me being me, I tried to talk them down, so I did get it for $475. Big whoop. Um, not quite half price. Sorry for the clickbait. I thought it looked good on the thumbnail, so. Anyway, let's go see what I got. Okay, I guess we'll have to go with a little wide angle here at first. So, this is the box that it came in. It was open. It is the Explore Scientific box. Here we have the box for a minute. All right. The Explore Scientific ED80. Even had this little thing hooked onto it. So I think it's a brand new scope. Triplet air spaced apochromatic refractor, 80 millimeter diameter, F6, 480 millimeter focal length, EMD coatings. So ED stands for extra low dispersion glass. This one has FCD1 glass. They do make a model of this with the FCD 100. This is not that, unfortunately. Uh, the FCD 1, which this has, is comparable to FPL 51. They're really close. And if you don't know what ED glass is, that stands for extra low dispersion. Um, when light comes through glass, it disperses and then they have to refocus the red, green, and blue back into a point. With low dispersion glass, it doesn't disperse as much, so it doesn't take as much glass to focus the waves into a single point. Finish looks really nice on it. Oh, that's tight. That's good. Yeah. Nice dew shield. Here we have the metal dust cap. Do not look at the sun. Kind of makes me wonder about humanity when they have to put signs like that on. So here is the look at the glass. Looks like we do have some collimation screws in case we're out of collimation, which I hope not. The glass looks very nice and clean. On the back, we have a we have a rack and pinion focuser. It means we have a gear and a greasy thing it does feel very nice nice and smooth it 
do have a 10 to 1 focuser right here. I don't feel very much backlash, unlike the one on my re reflector has about a third of a turn on the 10 to 1, which makes focusing hard sometimes. This screw right here, and there's two adjustment um, hex screws on the sides here to adjust this. I guess that's for rotation. These will adjust the focuser, I guess, to make it stiffer. Kind of like the way it is right now. We have three thumb screws for the compression rings, which holds the eyepiece in, or in my case, the camera. Seems to fit very tight. We have some ribs in here for refraction to keep the light from refracting <clears throat> a mount for your guide scope I guess I'll go back to the little one for a while Eventually, I think I might want to put some scope rings on this and a larger dovetail. We'll see how this one works. Doesn't look like this has been mounted at all. So, all in all, I think I got a new scope for a pretty good price. We'll see after I get it up and running. So, with this, I had to. I bought the field flattener off of Amazon. So it's just a 1X field flattener. No focal reducer at all. It is the Explore Scientific for this scope. Fits right into the two and a half inch focuser. It is also ribbed. Nice. Nice metal construction. It came with this end, screws on this way. Um, this unscrews. I think there's an M43, I guess, for that. But I will probably use the other one that came with it, open it up, and it will be the M48, that will fit my new key ring that I got for my coma corrector on my reflector. And now I have an M48 thread. My T-ring will go right on that. As usual, 55 millimeter back focus, so 11 with the T-ring and 44 with my camera. That should work out great. They screw together. And you unscrew that. That goes there. We put this back on.
that. Field flattener goes in here. And there we have it. T-ring camera goes on there. We're ready to rock. Also just came with it. Our diagonal. Apparently they're very nice star diagonals. I don't know that I will use it too much, but it does have the two inch to one and a half inch reducer. This is possibly carbon fiber or fake maybe, I don't know. 99% reflectivity. All right, we're ready to go. All right, we are ready to go. We have a clear night. When I say clear, no clouds, but we do have a lot of smoke coming from the north. Thanks, Canada. So we'll try our best. Hopefully we'll still get some clear pictures to be able to tell what this unit can do. Printed me a lovely hat and off mask to focus with for now. Got the DSLR hooked up, guide camera. Let's see if it'll work. Okay, well, we did some shooting. The smoke was a lot more of a problem than I was expecting. In fact, you could say it sucks. It really threw off the guiding. It was bad. The guide, you'd look at PhD2 and the guide star would just be a fuzzy blob. I don't really know if I got, well, I know I don't have enough data to really give the telescope a good review at the moment, but we did get some, so we'll take a look at it. So I shot with dual narrow band. This is a few hours of the HA. I think that probably made it dimmer than it should have been too, but oh well. So take a look at the corners. Yeah, my stars are not the greatest. They're egg shaped. Well, like I say, I mean, I have some stacking artifacts also, but I don't really see any bad aberrations like I see on my Newtonian sometimes, just egg-shaped. This corner's a little worse. I don't know, maybe my DSLR has some tilt issues that I don't know about since it's happening on both telescopes. But just mostly egg-shaped stars from the poor guiding. It's a lot easier to deal with than a reflector. It's much smaller and easier to pack. I can't wait to get it out on a nice clear night. So I guess we'll continue on with refractor life. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you have one of these telescopes, if you like it, what you've had to do to it. I like to learn. So anyway, I'll talk to you later and clouds suck and smoke.